Hello again, welcome to basics of noise and its measurement. Uh, this week we have been discussing uh, the transmission line equation and using it we have been solving for propagation of sound waves in uh, 1D tubes and till so far what we have accomplished is uh, that we have been able to solve for sound propagation in a closed tube as well as in an open tube. Today what we will do is uh, essentially we will cover two uh, uh, things. The first thing is we will see as to how sound propagates in an extremely long tube uh, and mathematically we can call it a semi-infinite semi tube. So, this tube goes on forever and it does not have a terminating point. So, how does sound travel in such tubes? So, that is one and the second thing is that we will introduce today uh, this concept of specific acoustic impedance. So, earlier we had talked about another impedance known as characteristic impedance and it was uh, defined as Z naught and we found that its value was rho naught times C and it did not change with respect to position or time and it was a uh, property of the medium. And today we are going to define another type of impedance, uh, specific acoustic impedance and see what we make of it. So, uh, once again welcome to uh, today's lecture and we are going to discuss uh, for starters the semi infinite tube. So, semi infinite tube ok. So, the tube would be something like this. And what these terms, uh, these uh, symbols uh, designate is that the tube is keeping on going in the positive x direction forever. So, it does not terminate at any point. At the other end, <coughs> so it has a fixed end at the other point, ok. So, it is length is infinite in positive direction, but it has a beginning, it has a beginning, but it has no end. So, that is why we call it as a semi infinite tube and and at this end what we are doing. So, this is again exciting it using a piston. So, what we know is that, so this is in this case uh, let us say x is equal to 0. Okay. So, in this case this is my positive direction and the tube has infi uh, infinite length in the positive direction and at x is equal to 0. We know that the pressure is given by P at 0 t is given by some number 42 for instance cosine of 2 t plus pi over 6. So, when we write transmission line equations for uh, this the equations will be same and as discussed earlier is and as explained earlier in the case of comp, uh, this uh, closed tube we would have 4 unknowns and 2 equations and to solve for 4 unknowns we need 2 extra conditions. Now, one condition we know is that at x is equal to 0 the pressure is this. So, this is my first condition. and this is basically a boundary condition at x is equal to 0. Now, the other uh, in uh, in the case of a closed tube and an open tube we had also a known boundary at the other end, but in this case because the tube is extremely long infinitely long it has no other end it has only one end. So, there is no other boundary condition. So, then what would be the second condition because without prescription of the second condition we cannot find all the 4 unknowns because now we have only 2 transmission line equations. This is the third equation, but then what is the fourth uh, condition and the fourth condition uh, we can infer based on the fact that the length of this tube is infinite. So, and then again you have to look at the physics of this problem. 
what is happening is that you have a piston at x equals 0 and it is producing sound and the sound is travelling and we have seen that the solutions for uh, pressure wave uh, could be that there is a wave propagating in the positive x direction and there could be a wave propagating in the negative x direction. Now in this case physically because the tube is extremely long uh, there is no wave propagating in the negative x direction because the sound it gets generated here and it just keeps on traveling and it does not hit a boundary to reflect back. In case of a closed tube or an open tube there was a boundary and at that boundary the sound was getting reflected back here that reflection is not happening. So that reality has to be now expressed as a mathematical relation and that will be that my p minus which represents the complex amplitude of the backward travelling wave that is equal to 0. So this is my second condition and please note that this second condition is not a boundary condition but it is the condition which reflects the reality of the fact that the length of the tube is infinite in positive x direction. So these are the two conditions and with these two conditions we can now solve for P and U. So once again I will write down the transmission line equation. So P x t is equal to real of P plus E minus J omega x over C plus P minus E j omega x over c e j omega t and u of x t is equal to real of p plus e minus j omega x over c minus p minus e j omega x over c e j omega t times 1 over z naught and because p minus is 0, so these are general equations but because p minus is 0 this thing goes away and this thing also goes away. Okay. Now with these p minus terms gone uh, these two equations represent uh, solution for semi infinite tube. Okay. Now we have two equations and we still have three unknowns p plus this function is unknown and u of x t is unknown. So we have two equations three unknowns so the third so the third condition is this one and we will use this condition to eliminate and solve for all of these unknowns. So that is what we are going to do. So now what we do is we apply the boundary condition at x is equal to 0 and that is P of 0 t equals 42 cosine of 2 t plus pi over 6 okay. and this I can write it as real of 42 e j 2 t plus pi over 6. So now I apply this thing in the equation for pressure and what I get is P of 0 t is equal to real of 42 e j 2 t plus pi over 6 and that equals real of p plus e minus j omega and the value of x is 0 in this case. So this term goes away so it is p plus e j omega t. Okay. I am going to expand this side further and rewrite this equation. So, and I will omit uh, this.
thing called real. So, what this means is that 42 E j times 2 t times E j pi over 6 equals p plus E j omega t. Okay. What this means is, so this equation has to be valid for all values of time, it has to be valued for all values of time and that will happen only if this 2 t term is same as omega t which means 2 t should be omega t implying that omega equals 2 and the second condition is that this term in green should be equal to p plus. So, which means p plus equals 42 e to the power of j pi over 6. Okay. So, now we have a specific solution for semi infinite tube which is a specific because it corresponds to this boundary condition. So, with this simplification my solution is p of x and t. So, what I do is I put these things back in the expression for pressure. So, p of x and t is equal to real of 42 e to the power of j pi over 6 because this thing is p plus right times e to the power of j omega x over c and omega will be 2. So, I am going to erase it j times 2 x over c I will make it clearer minus j times 2 x over c where 2 is the value of omega times E j times 2 t real of 42 e to the power of j 2 t minus 2 x over c plus pi over 6. So, the value of pressure is P of x and t equals 42 cosine of 2 t minus 2 x over c plus pi over 6. So, that is my pressure function okay. and similarly and similarly I can compute the value of u as a function of t because here the expression for u is given and all I have to do is substitute p plus by 42 e j pi over 6 and omega by 2 and I will get an expression for u also. So, that is the solution for a semi infinite tube. So, what are three uh, what are the important characteristics for these tubes that for a semi infinite tube the value of p negative that is the complex amplitude of backward traveling wave is 0. For a closed tube the value of u at the closed end is 0 and for an open tube the value of p that is pressure at the open end is 0. So, if we apply these three conditions then we should be able to solve for the pressure uh, and velocity for all these three tubes. So, at this stage I would like to introduce a new term and it is called specific acoustic impedance. Okay. And this is designated by term z 
and this is nothing but the ratio of complex pressure at any point in a tube. So, this definition of acoustic impedance right now is for one dimensional wave only. So, it is the amplitude of complex pressure at location x and at corresponding to a frequency and also so that its ratio of pressure and velocity amplitudes complex pressure amplitude and complex velocity amplitude and these amplitudes can vary with respect to frequency and also they can vary with respect to position so now what i am going to do is i am going to so now you have seen how to calculate the value of u and p for open closed and uh, semi infinite tube so what we will do is we will develop a table uh, which lists uh, the characteristic impedance as well as the specific acoustic impedance for all these three tubes so you have tube and the first one is semi infinite the second one is closed and the third one is open okay and the characteristic impedance is z not for all the three because it does not change it does not depend on the system it is the function of the medium it depends on the medium only and its value is rho naught c where rho naught is the density and c is the velocity of sound in the medium but specific acoustic impedance that is defined as z and if you do the math for semi infinite tube you will find that the specific impedance specific acoustic impedance for semi infinite tube comes out to be z naught for a closed loop uh, for a closed tube it works out to be j times z naught cotangent of omega x over c and for an open tube it corresponds to j times minus j times z naught tangent of omega x over c so this is an important table and what this says is that the specific acoustic impedance actually depends on the boundary conditions of the system and if it's a semi infinite tube it's same as z not if it is a closed tube then it depends on the cotangent of omega x over c and if it is an open tube then it depends on the tangent of omega x over c so this is the overall summary and uh, this closes this particular uh, lecture and what we will do in the next uh, lecture is a continuation of this and now we will start talking about imperfect terminations so thank you very much and i look forward to seeing you tomorrow bye